so this is part two of the video series on building a smaller, cheaper uh, actuator for the SFX100 setup using 80x80 80 80 alley profile. So in the last video uh, I talked about the general principle behind it, um, showed the alley profile and some of the 3D printed parts that I've already done and um, we discussed uh, where the project had come from. Now, uh, Amy in China has kindly sent me a sample of each of the parts to build up the actuator, which arrived uh, earlier. So let's have a look at what we've got. So we've got the big linear bearing. shaft we've got the ball screw which is different from the FSX sorry I've been in hospital today and had a bit of sedative so I might not be speaking particularly clearly different from the normal SFX 100 in that it doesn't have a flange it's got a keyway instead to make things smaller motor coupling and finally the top bearing and just let them lock up The only issue I can see is that I don't have a Woodruff key dowel um, for the ball screw, so I need to ask Amy about that and or source something to do the job before I can put this together with the 3D printed parts and have a dry, a dry assembly it um, and have a little play. Right, so I've had a little play with the 3D printed parts around the ball screw. Uh, so I already knew that the slider parts uh, fit well inside the um, alley profile, which is one of the um, things I had to tweak with the original models that came from Fastmate Racing. Um, but now I've got the ball screw can see there's further issues <clears throat> so the hole inside the slider is too small for the ball screw by a fair amount if we measure the ball screw we've got 29.95 is 29.85 so this needs to be a fair bit bigger. Well, I say a fair bit bigger. It doesn't need to be a fair bit bigger. It needs to be slightly bigger, um, so that it stands half a chance of sliding on there nicely. Uh, now, one thing that has worked out quite well is the hole in this lower part of the slider. It's a really nice fit on the shaft, um, so no more needing to 
put masking tape on like on the original SFX 100 that will fit in and stay in there nicely so I need to take a break for a while and reprint just these three parts of the slider because um, they're the ones that fit around oh also noticed that the length of the bearing is 45 whereas this stack up of parts of the middle part of the slider is 46 so that leaves us with the potential of one millimeter slop in operation so as I've got to reprint these with a bigger hole I'm going to take one millimeter off the height of this part um, and then I'll come back and continue with the video okay so I've redesigned the uh, center of the slider and the two sort of uh, sides of the center of the slider uh, made the hole a little bit bigger and the keyway a little bit wider uh, they're still quite tight um, but they fit nice now <clears throat> so the way the slider builds up see these three elements go onto the ball screw and that's the this piece with the nose on which will accept the shaft into there goes up the underside to the other side of the uh, end that's got the thread on and then this top plate like the original SFX 100 with the o-ring in it goes on top and then long M6 by 60 mil um, bolts with M6 nylocks into these if you can see hexagonal recesses in the bottom uh, hold it all together to make your slider assembly um, what's probably best to do when you get to that point and I, I've ordered some M6 by 60s so that I can't uh, which will be here tomorrow so I'll do that then but it's probably best to assemble this actually slid into the profile to hold it all square before you tighten it up which is possible because you can just put it in and nip them up once it's in so I can't go any further with that at the moment on this end I've put the linear bearing onto the end cap which required me to tap the end cap in the four positions M6 um, and I used my favourite new tool for that which is a tap set that you can get from Amazon I'll put the link in the description um, which comes with these tie nitrided basically impact driver bit um, you have to go a bit careful with you doing you know, blasting into plastic but it's, so long as you're careful it saves you loads of time so I've got um, the pack comes with uh, M3, M4, M5, M6, M8 and M10 and um, for this you need to use the M6 and the M5 I think it was like I don't know 10 or 11 pounds or something not very expensive well worth getting so I tap them M6 M6 button heads 35 mil long with washers bolting that into that I've got a plan in future to get these end caps uh, laser cut in two pieces so that we've then got the opportunity to um, thread into metal rather than in plastic the way this is all designed everything's in compression anyway there's no load on the threads but uh, I think it will be quicker easier and potentially cheaper to have them laser cut and obviously the threads will then be that bit stronger and then <clears throat> at the other end this other end cap I've fitted the top fixed bearing that goes that the ball shaft goes into and that required me to tap this uh, M5 and then fit it down with M5 button heads that's uh, all done so uh, progress has been made but oh, I'll just show you 
That's got a lovely, easy, frictionless slide. Now I am going to make one other change to the design of this end cap and put a slightly tighter hole in it on the shaft. Um, just so if all else fails, the plastic uh, could end up giving you a little bit of a bearing surface. Not that I think it really needs it, um, but might as well do it. Um, okay, so I'll come back and get on with the next part tomorrow when the bolts come for the slider. Right, so my long M6 screws turned up. Little button heads. I've got captivated nylocks in the bottom and obviously yeah, our sandwich pack of um, slider components so they're all done up tight clamping the ball screw so all we've got to do is fit the shaft into the bottom And then we put the fixed bearing end cap on with its lock screw, with its lock nut, sorry. Then there's a little grub screw to just do up as a securing method. Then we can slide the whole assembly into the channel. coupling on we can see it feels really good so obviously the in your bearing is just bolted on to the end cap externally because on this size of Abbey profile there's not room to socket it in and put it on the inside recess it like on the original SFX 100 um, but that feels really good so for a dry assembly of the actuator I think that's us complete um, what I would do now is take it apart again grease everything up and put it back together one final time. Call that one actuator complete. So join us next time when uh, I'll go further. I'll probably buy a Thanos controller, get some uh, motors and drives, and finish the system off for my own purposes. I'm not sure when that's going to happen, so don't expect the next episode to be in the next few weeks. I've only got this far thanks to the uh, generosity of of Amy in China for sending me a sample of each component just so that I can carry on with the series and get you guys up and running. Um, I really like this design of actuator. It's smaller, lightweight, all the bits feel nice and solid. Uh, and even though they print a lot quicker um, and it's given me some ideas on how to make these components in metal without there being huge uh, cost associated with it uh, maybe depending on time frame maybe the next videos will cover um, you know uh, metal end caps rather than 
three D one three D printed ones rather than going on for the like the complete um motion system build. Uh, leave that for a later date. So uh, thanks for watching. Um if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel and if this is your sort of thing then um hit the thumbs up for the uh, for liking the video that would be great. Okay, so until next time, thanks for watching. Bye.